Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about the Outliner panel. So, as the name implies, the Outliner is an outline format view of the objects that are in your model. So when I talk about objects, let's just, make, just be right up front clear about this. I'm not talking about the edges and faces that make up the 3D geometry. I'm talking about the containers you create, the groups and the components. Each of those is going to have its own space on the outliner and you're going to be able to visualize your entire model just based through that hierarchical list. So this is great when you get into more complex models where you have more than one group or component and you start putting groups and components inside of one another. Um, excellent way to navigate and we're gonna talk about how to use it and leverage it right now. All right, so I have a very simple model here to start with. Uh, I have, of course, Sal, Sal's right here. And then I have two groups. Each group, if I tap into one of these, has two components. That's what we're working with. So. That may seem like five things, but it's actually seven things, right? Because I have Sal, group, group, that's three, and then component, component, that's four, five, component, component, six, seven. So what Outliner does is it makes tracking that sort of information, knowing that I have seven items, much more easy. So I'm gonna open the Outliner right now, and I'm gonna see here is, this is my entire model. In, in a snapshot in Outliner. So I can see here, like I said, it is like an outline. It indents things that are inside of other things. So here I have Sal out by himself. Then I have two groups. We collapse these, I can actually see group, group. And then in each group, I have box one and box two. You can see that right there. This information is super, super helpful when you have bigger models. This is a very basic, we're square one. We're, we're, we're keeping it simple, but if you have stuff just nested inside one layer after another, or you have hundreds of objects in your that make up your model, this is gonna make it much easier to know that they're in your model and actually work with them. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I pick on some, I pick on Sal right here, not pick on, if I select Sal, I don't wanna pick on Sal, I like Sal. Uh, I'm gonna see Salvador one lights up over here. Same thing with this group, if I grab that group, group, gets highlighted here. If I double click, you can see group gets bolded. And then if I pick an item inside that group, that group gets highlighted while the group name stays bolded. So it's a great way that I can do that, but I can do the opposite too. If I wanna jump back to Sal, I can go over to the outliner, tap on Sal, and boom, Sal's lit up. And uh, the, the group I was in before is closed. So this makes it super easy to jump through the model and pick specific pieces rather than click, click, click to get in and out of things. I can also control visibility here. So if I wanted to, I could say turn, let's, let's go ahead and exit out of there, turn this group all the way off. Just tap that little eyeball, turn it back on. Turn just one box inside that group off. This is probably one of the quickest and easiest ways to temporarily toggle visibility because you have so much control in a higher level container or the geometry inside. I can't turn off raw geometry, but let's be honest, you shouldn't be modeling. If you're modeling to the point where you have different things, they should be in containers anyhow. You shouldn't have any raw geometry when you get to the point where you would want to organize or see certain things. I have some uh, other buttons up here too, because I can I can toggle everything on and off with a button here, and I can expand or collapse my entire tree with the click of a button also. I also have the ability to jump to 3D Warehouse, and I can see unused items. Um, so unused items is kind of interesting because what unused items is, is components that are saved into the model, but not currently in the model. So it's saved to the file, I should say, but not currently in the model. So for example, if I was to take Sal and erase him, Sal would go from my model up here at the top down into unused items. That is to say, Sal is saved in this file, but he's not on the screen right now, which is actually another thing I can do here. So whether it's from the top section or the bottom section, if I hit this little ellipse right here, I have the option to insert. If I click insert, I get a Sal, and he places wherever I tap. 
I can do the same with these other things. So if I want to duplicate this group right here, I could say insert. And now when I tap, I have a third group with two components inside of it. These little images, little, little, uh, little icons here do have meanings as well. The little three boxes, it's the same as the boxes we see down here means component, while the little dashed box with two cubes inside of it is a group. And I can just see that, and just again, by looking at this, I can tell what that is. The I right there, let's deselect, is the, the current status of visibility. You can see everything kind of grays out when you do that, when you turn it invisible. Um, and I can actually move stuff around too. So if I wanted to, I could say, hey, Sal, you are going to go into this group. So Sal, even though it's over here, has just become part of this group. So if I pick that group, you'll see that that group now includes Sal. So what I could do things like I could grab this entire group and say, put that group in this group also. So now I can say I have even another, another level of nestedness, right? So I have box one in this group, in this group. And again, it can get kind of hairy to try to remember that. Where is everything in my model? What level is it on? But if you have the outliner open, it makes it keeping your model organized, very clean, very easy. And, you know, it's really kind of the best way to work because it's going to keep your models organized, make it easier to work with. And then if other people ever get this file, much easier for them to work with as well. So outline is a very powerful tool. And there's some use cases where we could go way deep down into some complex models. But of course, we want to keep it simple. We got, we're, we're on the simple again, right? Square one this is the first thing. I would recommend if you don't use Outliner, try it out. It's going to force you into some habits that you should be doing anyhow. You should be grouping, component, componentizing things, putting things into objects, and then naming them. That is key, key, key to making Outliner useful is putting names on things. Uh, I had things called group, shouldn't have things called group. They should have names. Uh, but it'll force you to do that. And as you get used to use it, use it a little bit more and more and more. You're going to find that it makes working with complex models easier a lot easier and you can navigate through and find things and uh, in a way that you just it's just very difficult to do if you don't have it if you like that video click like down below and if you haven't already please do subscribe we create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe most importantly though please do leave us a comment down below uh, what do you think about Lightner? Do you use it? What do you think of this series? What should we cover next? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.